Hi, my name is Mike Marco, and today I will be presenting on velocity versus team signature topic, uh, including uh, Agile Iceberg framework. About myself, I have 15 plus years of management and mismanagement, working on four different continents, managing projects anywhere from air defense to waste management, using different tools and techniques. Um, I published a couple of books, I have MBA and a bunch of certificates. Some people care about that, some people don't. I have a lot of hobbies, play guitar, ride horses, scuba, etc. Alright, uh, I'm presenting uh, subjects based on my experience, based on what I learn from others, what I do, what I use when I'm managing projects. So, uh, if you find something here that's kind of uh, getting out of the mainstream management scrum, I apologize, but for me the most important thing in today's world is to learn, adapt and get it done. So that's my approach when I manage projects as well. Uh, I use various tools and techniques as needed to complete my projects. And I really work in many different environments when the team was exposed to many different frameworks, methodologies, etc. Anywhere, again, Agile, Scrum, Traditional Project Management, uh, ITAL, CMMI, etc. Six Sigma. Uh, this is an Agile framework uh, called Agile Expert. It's part of my book, uh, A Guide to Agile Management, Body of Knowledge, ABAC. Uh, I developed this framework in 2007 and I've been using it on um, different projects. I think the most important thing for the Agile project manager is to be able to decompose. To decompose from strategic objectives to project objectives, uh, to decompose from user requirements, functions, to user stories, features and tasks. Of course, with the uh, with engagement of other stakeholders including upper management, sponsor, team members, end users, etc. Well, uh, so here's the question. Could we standardize a Scrum Agile team output? Um, over, a period of time, over a period of time, when you put people together, they tend to establish a pattern. It's a, their own culture. And that culture is not only how they interact among themselves, but how they engage with the work. Um, so some of the, the parts of that culture that we have to understand is to understand the level of effort versus duration, to be able to see the rhythm and consistency of the team performance, uh, to understand the throughput and progression rate of the team, and then also predictability and stability of the team performance. At the end, we have to understand the team preference as well. So what is the level of effort? The uh, level of effort is a total amount of work, hours or points that a scrum team is going to put on a certain user story, sprint, iteration or project. And uh, usually it's measuring points or hours. Um, on opposite side from that is a uh, duration of the project. For example, if I work, uh, if I can commit myself 20 points or 20 hours on a particular user story and I'm available only four, day, four hours a day, that means 20 hours four hours every day, that means it will take me five days to complete that user story. So you see, if I'm able to kind of commit myself to a certain rate, uh, that means I can estimate duration of that user story task or even project. So let's say in this example, if I say that based on historic records, my team delivered 100 points per sprint, and sprint is 30 days, and I have 1,000 points, 1,000 points divided by 100 points, is equal to 10 sprints, and if every sprint is 30 days, that means it will take my project uh, 30, uh, 30 hundred days or one year to deliver. So when you consider these 100 points as a critical item, because it's coming from the standard uh, that you establish with your team, you see importance of establishing connection to the team so they can understand that providing some uh, standard performance uh, regularly consistently throughout the project, throughout the sprint, can help estimate project duration and cost uh, better. Um, another subject that you need to understand around your project, is, a, uh, and especially project team, is a rhythm and consistency. If you're a musician, then definitely you know what I'm talking about. You're repeating the same patterns over and over again. Again, based on your team expertise, their knowledge, if they're repeating the same task over and over, they're repeating the same user stories over and over from project to project, they should tend to, they should be able to kind of develop a range or standard how many points or hours will be needed to deliver certain 
type of user story or work. Okay. Uh, also, you, to keep consistency, you have to understand that people have their own uh, feelings about uh, work and how much work they can put, let's say, in the morning versus afternoon, etc. All of these enterprise environmental factors should be considered before you start uh, establishing standard within your the team, uh, agile or scrum team. So let's say in terms of predictability, once we establish the standard, they can, we can focus on an ideal burn down chart. Burn down chart will tell you graphically how much work is left, uh, how many points of work is left within your sprint. So uh, for many uh, agile mentors, uh, uh, one ideal day of work is like a two, three days of regular work. Uh, in my case, I was able to negotiate with some of the upper management of some of the companies and other managers from those companies, that one ideal work is uh, six hours of work during the day. In other words, you don't work eight hours, you work six hours, and you should plan your work against those six hours on a daily basis. Um, again, in this case, and I took this slide from Wikipedia, in this case, uh, a project, a sprint will take 200 something points, and if it's a 21 day, so you're assuming that every day you would reduce 10 points. So if that's, that's technically a signature of your team. Signature is a pattern, repeated pattern that your team can deliver, can use, get used to it. To commit to the 10 points team, or to build this standard, team has to go through two, three months of adjustments so they can start better understand their work environment, their skills, expertise, so they can come with a better and more accurate estimates. Again, team preference is very important because some people work better in the morning, some people work better in the afternoon, some people work better with certain type of user stories, or some people work better with a certain type of uh, agile project managers, scrum masters, or even team members. All of these have impact on your ability to help your team standardize the rate uh, or number of points that they can deliver per user story within the sprint. Um, so, could we standardize the Agile or Scrum team outputs? My answer is yes. Uh, as long as you understand the enterprise environmental factor of your project, as long as you understand the risk, uh, culture of your team, uh, skills, expertise level, preferences, etc. In my, uh, my understanding is that uh, if you can measure something, you can manage. And that's why it's very important that you bring to Agile Scrum some kind of measurement tool that people or team members can commit and then you can track their performance against that. I know a lot of Agile mentors disagree with this simply because I am insisting that people or team members, Scrum team, uh, Scrum team they have to commit to a certain uh, uh, performance level. And again, my ideal day of work is a six hours. And within those six ideal hours, you've got to give me six hours or six points of work. And that's another disagreement that I often hear from other Agile mentors. They think that every team member can develop their own uh, uh, measurement, how much, how many points or how many hours would take them to deliver a certain task. I agree with that for the beginning of the introduction of the Scrum or Agile uh, framework. But within the two, three months, we should kind of establish some kind of range. Um, again, establish the team range and make sure that you can measure team performance, which would be pretty much the key component to establish a standard. How do we measure, how do we calculate how many points can team deliver per user story? Go back to historic records, ask for expertise, use the composition or buying process when they go to decompose uh, the, the requirements, functions that we're supposed to deliver to the customer. So technically you buy team into this process and they determine standard. I would never tell to my team members that this particular user story will take you 10 points or 10 hours. They will tell that to me. But then over a period of time, I'm hoping that they would stabilize that, that estimate. So that estimate will be more accurate or even better. In other words, I can get more work out of them. So a signature is something that I got in a Scrum environment. And again, it's a, it's a measurement or pattern that team develops repeating the same tasks. Okay. So again, it's a level of effort. Uh, you have six hours in an ideal day of work for me. 
that means six points. Again, I always use one hour for one point, and vice versa. Let's say in this scenario, you have historic records, and if I go to talk to the team members, if we have done certain, certain type of work in the past, and they give me or perform at certain level, I would expect that they perform at the same level or better on my on repeated user story, repeated project. That's, that's something that they have done in the past. Okay? So basically, you get to historic records and you just copy information from previous projects. Um, to build this signature or pattern when people can commit themselves to, to certain standards or estimates, it takes some time. And usually two, three months. Um, so let's say if in a sprint one I have a 900 points. And let's say my team agreed that they can deliver uh, 100 points per user story. Let's say most of the user stories are 100 points, just for the sake of exercise. So that means that in the first sprint they can deliver 900 points divided by 100, that means nine, nine user stories. But then, as time progresses, as they learn, as become more familiar with the project, as they establish their, their work routine, etc., I'm expecting that they will do more user stories. So that means if the user stories are still 100 points, that means in a sprint four they will do 12 user stories. Of course, uh, 100 points user story is pretty large, epic kind of user story. You have to decompose that. But I'm just using this for the example here. Um, so let's see if I'm going to the daily scrums uh, and uh, people are reporting, team members are reporting how much work they have done. I am expecting them to deliver always the same. So let's say as a team, each of them work four hours a day on my project, there are 10 of them. I'm expecting that they will deliver 40 points every day. In this scenario, you can see that on day 17 and 18, they didn't do anything and they catch up on day 21 and 22. Again, uh, that's part of real life and things happen like this. In a well-tuned up scrum or agile environment, you should be able to stick with the, the, with the ideal uh, uh, <coughs> performance, uh, ideal burn-down chart within your team. Uh, this is opposite. There is a scope change or there was some change in our in in requirements, etc., that requ requires some additional time to, to complete for the team. In this scenario, maybe we reduce the, the number of um, points that's supposed to be delivered on day 22, 23, 24, 25. Again, to establish a signature of the team or pattern, we have to understand enterprise environmental factors, we have to understand the skills of the team, expertise, their commitment, their personality, preference, preferences, etc. On opposite side from the Scrum, again, the Scrum uses signature. Um, in Agile, we use velocity. And for many people, this is the same term. Uh, the only difference is that in velocity, beside the level of effort, we also include the tax, uh, task complexity and the size of duration. So when you ask somebody how, how, long, how many points will take you to a to certain type of work, if that person tells you five points, in my world, and many people disagree with me, uh, five points means five hours of work. But let's say they say the one hour of pizza making process and one hour brain surgery is not the same complexity level. Yes, but it's still one hour. So in my, from my perspective, I would, the only difference is how much you're paying for to make one pizza in one hour or to do one surgery, brain surgery in one hour. So that's the only difference. One hour is one hour. Okay. Um, I don't like to, to use different points for different type of tasks if they have different duration. And that's something that many people disagree with. Okay. Um, it's up to you to, to absorb this and to, to kind of digest this information for your, for your own agile environment, scrum environment. I think that if you are judging people and you're allowing people to use different uh, number of points for the same level of effort task, you may allow people to, to fudge the numbers I don't want to say to hide beside the, to, to, to hide some risks within the project without reporting them, etc. Or maybe even laziness. I mean, I don't want to go to those extremes, but things can happen. So, what is the critical part to establish these patterns, regardless if it's a signature or velocity? It's a retrospective. That after every sprint or iteration, you connect to the team members, and then you repeat 
you repeat these efforts over and over again until you reach that standard level that people or team can perform. Some of the estimating technique in, well, uh, in Agile or velocity, again, uh, you're calculating velocity includes complexity, effort, size in order to calculate the points. So you see that estimating is much more complex in velocity uh, than comparing to signature. Because again, my concept is that when you tell me the, uh, the points, five points would be five hours of work. I keep it very simple. Uh, again, in other environments, five points of work can be five hours if you are expert or 15 hours if you're not expert. Um, if you estimate velocity, uh, you can use run iteration. So basically, you just look at the same type of task or user story or feature throughout your iterations and see what was the predominant number of points for that type of work. And you can just pick that from the uh, from the historic records and assign or recommend to your team to consider for the next iteration of sprint. Over a period of time, you want to build a range that be the team that your team should perform. And when I say team, that means that if I have a group of five experts, I, in the ideal world, I would like those five access, experts to deliver the same uh, work, the same user story or features for the same amount of points or hours or at least for the range. Let's say in this case we can say that certain type of work can take two to four points. And that's acceptable. You don't want to be below that or above that. And if you find out that numbers are getting above or below, then you need to adjust this range based on the facts. You got again, you go to retrospective, you meet with the team, and you find out the details behind this change. Um, just to summarize briefly, I strongly recommend if you want to establish uh, pattern signature velocity within your team, you need to understand enterprise environmental factors such as culture, skills, expertise, risks, work environment preferences of the team. And then also you need to track down their performance and engage with the team within the retrospectives, uh, through the retrospectives, retrospectives to learn about their feelings about the range that they have to commit for the future iterations of sprint. That would be a kind of brief summary of the velocity versus signature. I hope you enjoy it.